What are you doing here again? Well, I came to make sure that the fresh air you decided so suddenly to take agreed with you. It did. I told you it would. Keep a careful record of his temperature over the next few weeks, nurse. You needn't whisper to the nurse. I can tell you anything you want to know. I hate people whispering in front of me. Uh, my apologies, Colin. Well, you're doing so well, I don't think I need call on you for a couple of weeks. Goodbye. You were looking at me again. What are you thinking about? I'm thinking that I'm rather sorry for Dr. Craven. So am I. He won't get Misselthwaite at all. No, I'm not going to die. I'm sorry for him because of that, of course. But I was thinking just then that it must have been very horrid to have had to be polite for ten years to a boy who was always rude. I would never have done it. Am I rude? If you had been his own boy and he'd been a slapping sort of man, he would have slapped you. But he daren't. No, he daren't. Nobody ever dared do anything you didn't like because you are such a poor thing. But I'm not going to be a poor thing. And I won't let people think I am. I stood on my feet this afternoon. It's always having your own way that's made you so different and odd. I don't want to be different. And I'm not going to be. I shall stop being odd if I go every day to the garden. There is magic there. Good magic. I'm sure there is. So am I. Even if it isn't real magic, we can pretend it is. Something is there. Something. It's magic, but not black. It's as white as snow. try a scientific experiment. When I grow up, I'm going to make great scientific experiments, and I'm going to begin with one now. <sighs> All right, sir. The great scientific discovery will be about magic. I'm quite sure there is magic in everything, only we are all too stupid to get hold of it and make it do things for us, like steam, electricity, and horses. You mean the sort of magic I tried to make the first time you stood? Yes, you are the one who first gave me the idea. You kept saying over and over again, you can do it, you can do it. Well, that's what I'm going to do. Over and over again, I'm going to say, the magic is in me. I'm going to be as strong as Dickon, as strong as Dickon. And you must all do it too. That will be my experiment. Something must come of it. I know it must. Will you, will you help me then, weather stuff? Aye, aye, sir. Once in India, I heard an officer tell my mother that there are fuckers who say words over and over thousands of times. And I've heard Jem Pettleworth's wife say the same thing thousands of times, calling Jem a drunken old good for nothing. And, and so what all has come of that? He gave her a good hiding and went down to Blue Lion and got as drunk as a lord. <laughs> well, something did come of it. She just used the wrong magic, that's all. Do you think it'll work, Dickon? Aye, that'll do. It'll work for sure. Shall us begin it now? Yes. We'll all sit cross-legged on the ground. Hey, I, I can't do no leg crossing. Well, I will. I'm rather tired and I want to sit down. Hey, that won't begin by saying that tired. No, you're right. I must only think of the magic. <sighs> now we will begin. The sun is shining. The sun is shining. That is magic. The flowers are growing. The roots are stirring. That is magic. 
Being alive is the magic. Being strong is the magic. The magic is in me. It is in me. It's in every one of us. Magic, magic, come and help us. The sun is shining. The sun is shining. That is magic. The flowers are growing. The roots are stirring. That is magic. Being alive is the magic. Being strong is the magic. The magic is in me. It is in me. It is in every one of us. It is in Ben Weatherstaff's back. Magic, magic, come and help us. The sun is shining. The sun is shining. That is magic. The flowers are growing. The roots are stirring. That is magic. Being alive is the magic. Being strong is the magic. The magic is in me, it is in me, it is in every one of us. Magic, magic, come and help us. Whew. I don't think I have to say all that a thousand times. But now I'm going to walk round the garden. <coughs> With the staff, you have been asleep. <sighs> no, not so much. Sermon were good enough, but I'm bound to get out before the collection. You're not in church. Huh? Not, not me, no. Who, who said I were? I eat every bit of it. I said magic was in my back. Ah, well, doctor calls it rheumatics. That was the wrong kind of magic. Your back will get better. You have my permission to go to your work, but come back tomorrow. Hey, I, I'd like to see the walk round garden, lad. Well, I have no objection to your staying. Dickon, give me your arm, just at first. secret of all. No one is to know anything about it until I have grown so strong that I can walk and run like any other boy. But why, Colin? Why can't they know that you're getting well? <sighs> because they let my father know. And he's not to know until the experiment has quite succeeded. Then, one day when he comes back to Misselthwaite, I shall walk into his study and say, Here I am. I am well. It has all been done by a scientific experiment. <laughs> now then, Susan, bath time's for washing, not playing. Elizabeth Ellen, scrub your sister's back. And get a move on. Your dad'll be home soon for his supper and he doesn't want to walk through a flood. This will be finished for supper time. Ah, that's a good lad. You know, we'd never get on as comfortable as we do if it weren't for thy vegetable patch. I was afraid I'd been a bit neglectful of them. We all work that's been going on a put manner. But they seem to be thriving. <laughs> How's magic going on? Is Mr. Colin keeping up with it? He believes it all right. But now I reckon it's Miss Mary who's worked it. Yeah, it was a good thing that little lass comes at manor. It's been making of her and saving of him. Well, what do they all make of it? Him being so well and cheerful and never complaining. Ah! Elizabeth has a scratch me, Bubba. Come on now. Tell Tim. Here now. Into your vest. I'm upstairs with both of you. Johnny. Come here. Hey, 
don't know what to make of it. Every day as comes round, his face looks different and waxy colours going. But he has to do his bit of complaining. What for him, that's his name? Well, apart from Ben Weatherstaff, you only want it secret. Master Colin said I could tell you. But he's dead scared of his father knowing, before I can tell him himself. Well, I can understand lad wanting to surprise his father. But it might be a long while before Mr Craven comes back from his wanderings. Aye, that's true enough. Off you go. Take your vest. Mr Craven took a word of advice from me once before. I wonder if he would again. Eh? Oh, you witted me, lad. But make sure I'll never spoil anything for Master Colin. I <laughs> know they wouldn't do that. But for now, him and Miss Mary think it's best for him to do his bit of groaning and fretting. Just to throw him off scent. <laughs> Master Colin's right enjoying himself, I'll warrant to. Oh, aching all over. Oh, poor old Colin. <coughs> Is your back hurting? Oh. Stop fussing about, John. You can go. Nurse, get me a hot water bottle. Very good, Master Colin. <laughs> The more they laugh, the better for them. But they're that hungry. They don't know how to get enough to eat without making talk. Master Collins says if he keeps sending for food, they won't believe he's an invalid at all. <laughs> I tell you what, I've thought of a way to help them. When they go to Manor in the morning, they will take with me a pail of good new milk. And I'll bake them a crusty loaf for some buns we couldn't see them. That'll take edge off their appetite. Eh, hey, Mother, you always sees a way out of things. They was quite in a bother yesterday, wondering how they can manage and feeling that empty inside. <laughs> Is there any way the children could be getting food secretly? Oh, there's no way unless they dig it out of the earth or pick it off the trees. They stay out in the grounds all day and see nobody but each other. Well, if going without food suits them, we needn't disturb ourselves. The boy is a new creature. Well, so is the girl. You know, she's begun to be downright pretty since she lost that ugly little sour look. Now she and Master Colin laugh together like you'd expect young'uns to. Perhaps they're growing fat on laughter. Perhaps they are. Well, let them laugh. Why have you drawn back the curtain? Because it doesn't make me angry anymore to see her. Last night, I woke up, and as if the magic was filling the room, something made me go over and pull the cord. And then there she was, smiling down at me, as if she was glad I was standing there. What was her name? Lilius. Lilius. That's a nice name. You're so like her now, that sometimes I think, perhaps you're her ghost made into a boy. If I were her ghost, my father would be fond of me. Listen, someone's coming. Come in. I'm going to tell you it's time for bed, Miss Mary. Nurse will be up shortly, Master Colin. Good night. Good night, Martha. Good night, Mary. Sleep well. believe in magic. Make my father come home soon, because I'm not going to be able to keep this up much longer. My dearest, can you hear me? Lilius? Lilius, where are you? In the garden. In the garden.
door is locked. The key is buried deep. I'm sorry to disturb you, sir. I went to your bedroom, but... Uh... Have I slept out here all night, Pitcher? Yes, sir. I trust you've not caught a chill. No, I sat out here after dinner. The moon was so bright, it was almost like daylight. I must have dropped off. Uh, you'd walked a long way, sir, during the day. Yes, I have no idea how far I walked. I only know that for the first time in ten years, I was aware of the beauty around me. The gentians, the mountains, and the waters of the lake. It was as if I'd been blind and could suddenly see. <laughs> Don't look so alarmed, Pitcher. I'm quite sane. Yes, sir. Uh, if you want to read your letters, sir. Oh, put them here. I'll be in directly. Susan Sowerby that made bold to speak to you once on the moor. It was about Miss Mary I spoke. I will make bold to speak again. Please, sir, I would come home if I were you. I think you would be glad to come. And if you will excuse me, sir, I think your lady would ask you to come if she were here. Your obedient servant, Susan Sowerby. I think your lady would ask you to come if she were here. Mary, Dickon, just look at me. Do you remember that first afternoon when you brought me here? Aye, that we do. Just this minute, all at once, I remembered it myself. When I looked at my hand digging with the trowel, I just had to stand up to see if it was real. And it is real. I'm well, I'm well. Aye, that thought, lad. I shall find out thousands and thousands of things. I shall find out about people and animals and everything that grows. And I shall never stop making magic. I feel, I feel as if I want to shout out something. Something thankful and happy. Ah, they might sing a hymn. I don't know any hymns. Ah, Dickon here can sing one for the I'll warrant. Go on, Dickon. I want to hear it. Then won't take the hat off, Ben. Eh? Oh. And the moon stand up. <laughs> Praise to the holiest in the height and in the depth be praised. In all his works most wonderful, most sure in all his ways. It's a very nice song. Perhaps it means just what I mean when I said I wanted to shout out that I was thankful to the magic. Sing it again, Dickon. Let's sing it too, Mary. It's my song. How does it begin? Praise to the holiest in the height. Praise to the holiest in the height. And in the depth be praised. In all his works most wonderful, most sure in all his ways. Who is that? It's Mother, that's who it is. I know they want to see her, so I told her where the door was in. Even when I was ill, I wanted to see you. Hey, dear lad. Are you surprised to see me well? That I am. But that's so like their mother that made me out jump. Do you think that will make my father like me? Aye, for sure. And they too. Why, that growed near as hearty as our Elizabeth Ellen. I warrant that like their mother too. They'll be like a blush rose when they grows up, bless thee. Do you believe in magic? I hope you do. That I do, lad. Oh, I never knowed it with that name before. But what does name matter? It's joy that matters. 
joy that made you sing the way you were singing when I come in. We've been very grateful for all your food. But it's been terribly hard pretending to everyone he's still ill. <laughs> Bless us all. You've had a deal of play acting, I hear. But you'll not have to keep it up much longer. Mr Craven will be back soon. Do you think he will? Why? Maybe I can work a bit of magic too. Though I could see it did near break the art if he found out a father told him in the own way. I was laid awake nights planning it. How did you know? Perhaps because I'm a mother. You're just what I... what I wanted. I wish you were my mother as well as Dickens. Eh, hey, dear lad. The own mother's here in this very garden, I do believe. She couldn't have keep out of it. Your father mun come back to the... Hey, mun. Is your mother at home? No, sir. She's gone over at Moor's to work with a new baby. And Dar Dickens up at Manor working in the garden. I see. Here is a sovereign. If you divide it into... How many of you are there? Eight, sir. Counting the little list. Well, that would be half a crown for each of you. How is Master Collins, Mrs. Midler? Well, sir, he's, um, he's different in a manner of speaking. What? Well, you see, sir, neither Dr. Craven nor the nurse nor me can exactly make him out. For heaven's sake, Mrs. Medlock, come to the point. Oh, I'll try to, sir. He's growing very strange. You know, this would never be taken out of doors. Yes, good. Oh, on. the things we've gone through to get him out in his chair and leave a body trembling like a leaf. Well, without any warning, he suddenly insists on being taken out. He's taken a fancy to Miss Mary and to Mrs. Sarbis, boy Dickon. And if you'll credit it, sir, out of doors he'll stay with them from morning till night. How does he look? Well, he's fatter, but we're afraid it may be a sort of bloat. Where is Master Colin now? He's in the garden, sir. He's always in the garden. Thank you, Mrs. Medlock. believe it myself but it's true this wasn't a bit how I planned you should know but it doesn't matter in the garden yes it was the garden that did it and Mary and Dickon and his animals and above all the magic no one knows we kept it to tell you when you came when you came I'm well I can beat Mary in a race I'm going to be an athlete aren't you glad father aren't you glad I'm going to live forever and ever and ever. Very glad, Colin. Very, very glad. Now take me into the garden and tell me all about it. Here's the atlas. Thank you. Uh, will you take us up a beer, Weatherstaff, as you've come up? Uh, oh, I, I, I will, I will. Uh, thank you. Uh, 
Very kind of you. Uh, oh, that looks good. Did you see either of them? Aye, that I did. Both of them? Both of them. Together? Uh, thank you kindly, Mama. I think I could sup up another of those. What did they say to each other? I didn't hear that. Along of only being on stepladder looking over at wall. But I'll tell thee all, there's been things going on outside as you house folk knows not about. And what they'll find out, they'll find out soon. And if there's all that curious, look what's coming across grass. Master of Mistlethwaite. And by his side, walking as strongly and steadily as any lad in Yorkshire, Master Collins. 